welcome everyone to IDB. It is Andrew here. I have a couple different HomeKit cameras in my home, and unfortunately there's no real great way to watch all of them at once. If I really want to see my cameras, I have to jump into the Home app and view each camera individually, or I have to jump into the Manufacturers app. I've got both the Logitech Circle 2 and the D-Link Omna. If you have even more than two cameras, it gets even more ridiculous, more apps to jump between, more room to swipe through. That is why I started taking a look at HomeCam. HomeCam is an awesome way for your iPhone, your iPad, as well as your Apple TV to view all of your different home cam cameras and actually a bunch of other information at the same time. So it's really awesome. We're going to start here on the iPhone and then jump over to my Apple TV. Now on the iPhone, once you boot up the app, it's the general process of giving it access to your home data, which you obviously need to do for it to access any of your streams and data that are incoming. So once you begin a process for that, that's really it. I mean, it's a pretty simple app. It's literally just viewing all of your cameras at the same time. Logitech camera, for some reason, it always takes a few extra moments for it to kind of connect compared to the D-Link, but it's definitely there. You can control the volume in that bottom left-hand corner of what's actually going on, and you can even mute or talk to the camera if you have two-way microphone on the camera itself, which the D-Link and the Circle 2 both do. If we jump into the settings by tapping on that gear icon in that top right hand corner, there are a few things we can kind of customize, including switching between the homes that we have, whether it's to show the labels and disabling the device idle timer. Now that show camera labels has been toggled on, you can see the labels appearing right over the screens, including the Logi camera and the Omna. If you also saw when we were actually looking at the cameras and we looked at the individual camera information, I was able to add the Logi camera to my actual widget view. So now if I swipe just to the left of my home screen, I have cameras. Really easy way to show that without having to jump into your home app, without having to jump into the Circle app, any of those. Again, the Circle 2 does take a little bit longer, just a couple extra seconds for that video to populate, but it does show up just in normal time. Now there does seem to be a little bit of a bug when you're actually looking at the widget view by 3D touching on the app icon itself, but it's still really easy just to tap in and jump right into that Logi circle if that's the one that you have added to the widget. While the iPhone app is pretty awesome, the Apple TV app is even better and this new version is simply awesome. So we have our home cam app. I do wish it maybe it would allow you to kind of preview the cameras right there on your home screen, but uh, for now it kind of goes over what's new including data laters, room control, and the new design. As far as the basics go, it shows your HomeKit cameras. Right when you launch the app, you have a grid of all of your cameras that you have, and you can jump into any one that you want. You can then go back to the menu, choose another camera, or for even quicker kind of cycling action, just tap, just tap, not even click, on the left or right side of your Siri remote, and it'll jump to the next camera. And it does it with a really nice, smooth, fading animation. It looks so nice and so easy to use. If you swipe down from the top, another easy way to get to multiple cameras, or you can view settings or auto cycle. Auto cycle is a really cool feature, so I can choose which cameras I want to cycle between, turning on auto cycle, choosing the ones that I want, and it'll have a little orange border around them, then just tap on start, and then it'll simply jump between all of those cameras. You can choose which speed, so fast, medium, or slow, just depends on your preference. We're gonna do fast for the sake of the video, and you can see, really easy to cycle between my cameras so we can have this pulled up and cycle through them all day really really easy to keep an eye on what's going on in your home if instead we swipe down from the top and we head over to the settings check the settings of the application you don't have too many options but there are a couple that you can use to customize the interface like showing the camera's name showing the clock and showing the sensors the sensors is one of my favorite things, and that's in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that kind of the data overlay, including whether or not it is tracked motion. Now if you do have another sensor in the room, whether it's a Netatmo Home Coach, Eve Degree, Eve Room, any of those, that data can also show up here. So if it's in the same room as your camera, that information will be displayed right on the screen, like humidity, um, temperature, all of that. It's really, really nice. Now, if you simply long press and hold in the center of your C remote, you now have a new modal that gives you control over lights in your room, such as these string lights, which you can see just turned on at the bottom of the screen. Click again, you'll see them go off. This is pretty awesome. You're watching your camera, you think you see something, go and click hold, turn on a light, and you can see everything in the room. It is super, super handy. Moving on, you do have some overall settings which you can take a look at, such as showing camera labels, disabling screen timeouts, and which home that you're gonna be working with. Home cameras have been growing exponentially. Everyone is introducing new ones. We have a ton of new HomeKit cameras coming up on the market very soon, but there are still limitations. And I think HomeCam does a great job at fixing some of the limitations that we have, being able to view multiples at once, controlling accessories at the same time, 
all in a really easy to use interface. Currently, the biggest changes are here on the Apple TV version, but hopefully we'll be seeing a new update for the iPhone app to bring even more of those features as well. If you want, you can download the app at the link below in the description, and I want to hear what you guys think down below in the comments. Make sure you guys go ahead and give us a big thumbs up, click on subscribe, and until next time, this is Andrew for IDB.